We are in the new 2020 Nissan Maxima. Regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on this one will be the same. Powering the 2020 Maxima will be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 300 horsepower at 6,400 RPM, 261 pound-feet of torque, available at 4,400 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters for the SR trim level only, meaning the trim we have today does not have them, so we won't be testing those out. But nonetheless, zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 5.7 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 30 on the highway. That 30 highway MPG number is quite impressive, honestly, for a 300 horsepower sedan. So that's kind of cool. But anyways, in case you were interested, this one does take regular unleaded fuel, aka 87 octane, save you a little bit of money there. So that's always a plus. But before we do any kind of accelerations in the Maxima, I did want to mention to you guys, behind the shifter, there is a sport mode. There essentially are two driving modes, normal and sport. Sport, once you press that, it is immediately going to downshift for you, holding RPMs at a much higher level. It's also going to adjust the throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well. And I can definitely tell a noticeable weightier steering feel to this one when you do put it in that sport driving mode. So that is definitely a plus. But I think you guys know what time it is now. Let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test here in our maximum let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys and here we go wow oh my goodness <laughs> did not remember this oh my goodness Oh my god, I, I haven't hit the acceleration in the Maxima in quite a while and honestly I was kind of bracing myself for a good bit of spinach with all that power being set to the front wheels but it actually connected fairly well to the road, very well actually, so quite a very impressive acceleration. You can feel it in the pit of your stomach and you gotta love that. So I almost wondered at first if this car needed all wheel drive and it would be kind of cool if it had an optional all wheel drive system, especially since I'm in Pennsylvania, but still even with the front wheel drive configuration that comes with the Maxima, it definitely does very well. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.1 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's been absolutely perfect for me so far today. There's no brake pedal delay on the Maxima, so that's definitely a good thing. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, along with front and rear stabilizer bars. And I did want to mention, in addition to that, the SR trim level is actually going to give you a sport tuned suspension, meaning retuned dampers, stiffer springs, and a larger front stabilizer bar as well. But we don't have that trim today, but overall, the steering feel especially in sport driving mode it's brilliant i love the steering feel in that sport driving mode in the maxima so that is wonderful and if you didn't want that heavier steering feel honestly just take it out of sport driving mode and you'll be fine so really there's something for everybody there as far as the ride quality goes it's been actually just fine for me so far today so definitely no issues with the ride quality and touching on cabin noise really all you get is a little bit of engine noise from the uh from the 3.5 liter V6. But honestly, in my opinion, that's a good thing. I, I like engine noise. And that's really only when you hit the gas. When you're just cruising like this, there isn't a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin. So definitely a plus there as well. Touching on visibility a little bit. It's honestly perfectly fine. Typically, you're not gonna have any issues with sedans when it comes to visibility. Anyway, so I can see perfectly fine out the back. I did wanna also mention along the lines of visibility, there are rain sensing windshield wipers that actually come standard on every trim level of the Maxima. Meaning when the Maxima starts to detect rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So one less thing you have to worry about so you can better enjoy the drive. And it is an enjoyable drive here in the Maxima. So that is definitely a plus as well. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful 2020 Nissan Maxima. All right, you guys, here she is, the 2020 Nissan Maxima. Definitely a good looking car, in my opinion. But let's go ahead and start up front here. LED headlights coming standard across the board for all trim levels. And they do, of course, come with that automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. One last thing you have to worry about. LED signature daytime running lights also coming standard for all trim levels. And of course you will get LED fog lights if you were to go with the SR trim level and up. Therefore we do not have those today. So 
they are going to be kind of cool looking too but let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one chrome belt line molding coming standard chrome door handles also coming standard gloss black a pillars that is uh something that definitely distinguishes the maxima from some of its other competitors out there also gloss black floating roof line in the back so ties together quite well in my opinion and since nissan was going with that gloss black theme i should also mention power adjustable gloss black side mirrors will come standard across the board they will be heated with led integrated turd signals for the sl trim level and up and you will get that reverse tilt down feature if you were to go with the sr trim level and up meaning when you do put the vehicle in reverse mirrors are going to tilt down so you're less likely to run anything over so that's always a plus but take a look down at the wheel setup 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloy wheels coming with the ssv and sl therefore you are looking at those right now 19 by 8.5 inch aluminum alloys for the sr and you will get a slightly different design but still 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the platinum and platinum reserve trim levels so did want to mention that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back gloss black shark fin ish looking antenna up top there of course it's gloss black did want to mention there is a gloss black rear spoiler that comes standard with the sr trim level only otherwise there is no rear spoiler on the back of that trunk lid led tail lights coming standard across the board very cool looking design i'm going to zoom up here kind of close for you i just like all the detail work in those tail lights it looks so good back there but anyways just below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so do you think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear trunk there actually is a button on the key fob simply hold that down if you like also a button by the driver's side left knee and there's a button on the trunk itself as well so any of those three ways you can go about opening this one up once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 14.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it they make your way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.2 inches so by the numbers, it does sound a little bit on the smaller side of things, but for reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also for those rear passengers, I wanted to mention there is rear ventilation that comes standard for every single trim level. Also rear center armrest with cup holders, once again, coming standard for all trim levels. And then if you went with the platinum reserve trim level, actually you can get heated rear seats back there as well. So that is definitely quite nice. Make our way to the front seats. Cloth seating comes with the S trim level, leather seating with the SV trim level and up. And if you wanted that diamond quilted leather seating that you quite often see in Maximas, go with the SR trim level and up. That's how you're gonna get that. Eight-way power adjustable driver's seat with the S, and that comes with power lumbar if you go with the SV trim level and up. Four-way power adjustable passenger seat for all trim levels, memory settings for the SR and up, heated front seats for the SV trim level and up, that's always a big one, and heated and ventilated front seats if you were to go with the SR trim level and up. So taking a look now at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping, it is leather wrapped for all trims and heated for the SL trim level and up. And also I did want to mention with the steering wheel, you will get Alcantara in inserts if you were to go with SR trim level only a little sportier type of feel to it there now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key all of the buttons are actually located all on one side of the key you have your Nissan logo at the very top lock unlock button to pop the rear hatch that little circular button at the top just below the Nissan logo that is your remote start which is actually going to come standard across the board every single trim level is going to get you that remote start which means you get to warm up the maxima on a cold day so less likely to freeze to death when you first get inside so that's always a plus but also standard across the board though push button start located just in front of the shifter there so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there it's open then once started up tachometer is all the way to the left speedometer is to the right there is a fairly decent sized digital display front and center there to control what is on that digital display simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side of the steering wheel there it's going to give you a ton of different information like of course trip a trip b obviously but average miles per gallon it's going to give you your speed limit of any given road there's a digital speedometer located up there as well it's probably what i would leave it on it's of course when you need your next oil change there's a bunch of stuff honestly you can check out up there and make your way to overall interior quality a dual panel panoramic moonroof coming with the sl trim level and up meaning both the front passengers and the rear passengers get their own individual moonroofs that is pretty cool and that's what you're looking at right now of course 
dual zoom climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board, home link controls, meaning your garage door openers for up to three different garage doors found on the rear view mirror here. And that, by the way, is going to come with the SL trim level and up. Therefore, we do have those today. That's always a plus because the alternative is the rattling garage door opener you put on your sun visor, which, of course, rattles at high speeds on the highway. So it's nice having home link controls. <laughs> Ambient LED lighting also with the SL trim level and up. There's a bunch of satin chrome interior trim throughout this one. Maple wood interior trim with the platinum trim level and up. You will find a charcoal headliner with the SR and that also gives you aluminum foot pedals with that SR trim level too.